I've been rather busy since 2019. And I don't just mean busy since any arbitrary point in time during that year. But since this video... The philodendron pink congo doesn't actually exist. It's a fake. And because these do take some time to revert, nothing was really popping up on social media per se. There is no reason why people should be paying treble digits for these plants. It's insane. Since the global pandemic started, it would seem that the houseplant community has grown at a rapid rate, with a particular interest in the rare, the elusive, and the unusual. It would seem that in my absence from this series, there is a certain scam taking place that for some may be all too familiar. It's back. So I'm back. It started with an email. In 2019, I made a video unearthing a sick new scam in the houseplant community. Now the pink Congo is something slightly different. The pink Congo has kind of come about because of everybody's, you know, desire to have these philodendron pink princesses. I'm basically going to explain why this plant is a scam and why you probably should not spend your money on it. Industry suppliers thought it would be a really fun idea to pump seemingly normal plants with chemicals and feed it to us. And for a while, we consumed it. The same way we did with everything else. And we did it quickly. At the height of its popularity, the pink Congo plant was so desirable due to its bright pink emerging leaves that faded over time. People were paying upwards of $200 for this house plant. $200 for a fake. It turns out that this plant was just a regular old philodendron pumped full of certain chemicals in order to turn the leaves pink. And once the chemical supply wore off, the plant would just become a regular green houseplant, worthless in value compared to what had been eaten up by industry suppliers, or should I say, creators. In 6 to 12 months, these pretty pink franken plants would go from looking Instagram worthy to downright sickly. The reversion process was unnatural to witness. There are many other popular house plants that are known and loved for their ability to change color as they mature, but this was a completely different ballgame. 
Reversion would start at the tip of the leaf and drench its way across, making for a really unsightly metamorphosis. Once more and more people on the internet became fully aware of this and did what the internet does best, the scam received actually quite a bit of coverage. And as a result, we saw prices of these plants dropping to nearly nothing. Cost prices plummeted from around $20 to around $4 in no time at all. In turn, we saw less and less being sold, and the ones that were being sold had a disclaimer on the listing, urging buyers that the pink effect was temporary and would only last a few months. More and more plant shops slowly started to add disclaimers onto their listings, informing buyers that this sickly sweet pink effect was indeed temporary. However, a lot of shops still kept the prices the same, which the internet didn't like. Not all frontline sellers at online retail shops were willing to take the moral high ground and operate with an acceptable level of transparency. And we did have some... kickback. Some shops claimed that there were some cases of plants staying pink for well over a year, whilst providing absolutely no evidence of this. Other retailers straight up denied that these plants were fake. One online retailer took a more risky approach and claimed they were going to retreat the plants as an added service for people. So not only were we supposed to spend hundreds of dollars on one of these plants, but we now have to further pay these same shops to keep these franken plants topped up. Shame on you. I could go on a big rant about how irresponsible this is and potentially damaging both to the staff at the shop and the environment, but I'll save that for now. In my original video, you may remember I actually purchased a Pink Congo specially. I told you I would watch it until it reverted. In April 2020, it finally happened. Less than 12 months since I debuted the plant, signs of reversion were showing. I honestly thought that would just be the end of it. I was wrong. Since the start of the pandemic, it would be pretty fair to say that there has been a huge influx of newcomers to the hobby, and rare houseplants saw a huge boom in 2020. Which means there is a whole new pool of unsuspecting hobbyists for the taking, should their hard-earned money fall into the wrong hands. The possibilities are nauseating. Fast forward to very recently, websites such as Etsy and eBay are crawling with the promises of permanent pretty in pink and super rare additions to newcomers growing collections. I looked on websites such as Etsy, eBay and websites of some nurseries to see if Pink Congo was still being sold, the price they were sold for and what exactly was being said about them. Not a single plant had a disclaimer. 
And I have a lot to say on some of the stuff that is being said in place of a disclaimer, which we will get to in good time. But first, let's take a look at some listings. Looking at these listings, there are a few common denominators. The first, prices are usually kept reasonably low, probably because people are only a quick Google search from finding out the truth about these plants. Not one single listing talks about the reversion that will inevitably take place, which is probably just long enough for the refund window to close. You might argue and say that people are simply assuming that new plant collectors and hobbyists have done their research. Wrong. Sellers still need to state that the plant their unsuspecting customers are buying will look nothing like its former self in merely 6 to 12 months. And there will always be someone new to the plant community that could buy this Franken plant and not know the truth. Luckily, by this point, a lot of people do know that this plant is a proven fake. And people have moved on to other things, like you do. Only problem is, so have the scammers. So this doesn't just happen with this plant. A lot of weird stuff is going on. Now let me just find this post because I'm gonna have to probably read it to you. In an effort for suppliers to distance themselves from the disagreeable and distasteful reputation of the Pink Congo, they have created one or two duplicitous alternatives, all bearing similar hallmarks or heavy inspiration from the original, of course. Step right up, contestant number one, we have the Philodendron Pink Dark Lord. And please welcome contestant number two, the Philodendron Pink Mykens. The internet also had a very interesting encounter with the owner of the first ever pink melanocrysum. Someone showed a Philodendron melanocrysum that was only showing pink growth. Now you're probably thinking, no, there's green there. But if you look closely, you will see that there are two plants held up there for the photograph. The comment section had some questions. One Facebook user pointed out that the original poster also sold Philodendron Pink Congo at that time. Draw your own conclusions on that one. Forgive me, but we seem to have a last minute contender. This very interesting looking banana plant of all things. With leaves completely pink, this collector claims that this plant is the offspring from this mother plant. I'll leave that one up to you as well. 
I'd love to be able to tell you that this all stops at pink. But I'm afraid it doesn't. There is a new plant in town that I believe could be potentially dangerous to our wallets and it's actually what prompted me to make this video in the first place. Enter the White Congo. I'm really not going to beat about the bush here. This is exactly what you think it is. Producers of this plant have found a new way to create a white version of this plant in an effort to distance it from the pink Congo as much as humanly possible. And before anyone tries to tell you that it is in any way different, you can already see evidence of chemical induction that has taken place. And I don't see any fucking disclaimer here to even suggest that these plants are going to lose all of their milky white colouring and revert to green. Attempts were made on Facebook to blow the whistle and bring to everyone's attention that production on new plants was well underway and buyer beware. It was met with this kind of response. But it's okay, right? Because across the Pink Congo, the Pink Dark Lord, the Pink Micans, the White Congo, surely someone is advertising that they're chemically treated? That's certainly what these comments seem to suggest. Too many people think it is okay to sell plants this way simply because nobody is going out of their way to convince the buyer that the plant is real. It's not okay. Let me show you why. During my research for this video, I only found one listing out of literally hundreds that did Put a disclaimer on. Star note. These are chemically induced plants. Imported, adapted, and put out for sale. The plant is throwing you leaves at present. It may stop throwing after a couple of years. Like two years. And revert in green. <sighs> Close enough, I guess. Still, I wasn't quite satisfied. I took it upon myself to ask these sellers what they had to say about the true origin of these plants. My findings were quite interesting. When I approached the sellers of the Pink Congo, I received pretty much the same response every time. An admittance of chemicals involved in the temporary variegation. However, when I asked one shop how long the chemical lasted, the seller replied, To be honest, 
have no idea. Could last forever, but who knows? Once I began asking creators of the newer monsters such as the Dark Lord and the Pink Mykons, however, I received entirely different answers. Sorry, this is real pink, not chemical. We never doing chemicals. As I know, new leaf always be pink. Thank you. I have a couple of questions. The first... To the sellers that readily told me via private message that the plants were fake, why don't you put this information on your listing? What's the big issue? Could it be that you'd rather make as much money as you can with the least amount of transparency? And to those of you who lied to my face, do you think I was born yesterday? In my laborious quest to find out where exactly the fuck these people actually find the audacity to sell crap like this labelled as rare plants, I did come across the nasty new trick that sellers are trying to pull on us in order to avoid taking any legal responsibility for any misrepresentation of sale. We already know that a popular trick is to simply say nothing at all when listing these plants online. But some sellers are a little more committed than that. What do they do, you ask? They sell these plants as is. As is is actually a hidden legal term. If the buyer purchases an item as is, they simply accept the item in the condition that it is, and the seller is released from all liability. Using this term clarifies that there are no written or verbal warranties made to the buyer by the seller. In other words, no guarantees. A sale of this kind then often falls under the rule of caveat emptor. Latin for let the buyer beware. Just so you know what it looks like, here is an example of as is. Disclosure. The pink variegation stability is currently unknown with this plant. Bio acknowledges this and is open to enjoying the plant as is. There are no future guarantees. This is written on the listing for a pink Mykens plant. This statement was written with the sole intention of absolving the seller of any responsibility at all because they state that they don't know how long the pink will last for and that in purchasing the plant, the buyer is agreeing to this. This is not what I fucking meant by a disclaimer and you know it. The stability of this variegation is known. Anyways, here's what one of your buyers had to say. I give four stars because it's a nice plant and my curiosity was satisfied. But after doing additional research and receiving a plant that had a weird chemical scent, I learned the variegation is most likely chemically induced. That doesn't sound to me like this buyer knew about the scam, does it? They found out later on. And the plant was apparently so pumped full of chemicals that they could literally smell it. I also might point out that this plant was listed for over $130. Not exactly sold for cheap. Oh look! Here's another person completely deceived by this seller. I was basically conned out of $100 by buying this. I waited a week to leave a review and had planned on waiting longer because I had my reservations. The plant was packaged very well and arrived on time, but it was very weak after its trip. 
I was afraid I was going to lose it after it didn't firm up after a couple of days, but it's on the rebound now. It had three beautiful bright pink leaves, which have now started to brown. My biggest disappointment is a leaf that was pink is now turning green, which tells me the only reason this plant was pink is it was sunburned. So no, it isn't a pink micans, it's a regular micans, like the one I already had. True, there was a disclaimer, you don't guarantee any future growth, but an existing leaf changed colors. I hope you buy something nice with the birthday money I wasted. But it's okay, right? Because you sold the plant as is. Sellers like these know that the information surrounding the laws on buying and selling is difficult for some to interpret from country to country, and that it is incredibly difficult to work out exactly who the book stops with. Believe me, I have spent many hours researching and it's not the most enjoyable thing to digest. But I will try to give you the basics of what you need to know. Many of these sellers, regardless of where they are situated, are in fact businesses or traders. And they will be most displeased to watch me tell you all that the rule of caveat emptor only applies to private sellers and only under certain circumstances. The rule of buyer beware is somewhat outdated and due to the ever-evolving diversity of the way things can be marketed nowadays, particularly with the increasing prominence of selling online, there are now more exceptions to the rule than the rule itself. Kind of like I before E, except after C. The more you know. Many sellers will be very upset to hear that the law has developed significantly over the last few years. And all these nurseries on, for example, Etsy, eBay, that are regularly selling plants, are legally deemed to be acting within the course of business. Whether they say they are private sellers or not, they are selling a number of plants and they are selling for profit. If you are selling plants in the course of business, you are legally classified as a trader. And as such, anyone that buys a plant from you is protected under their local consumer rights acts. These do differ slightly from region to region, but I assure you, they cover what is necessary, including places such as Indonesia and Thailand, where many of these sellers are situated. It doesn't matter what you leave out in the item description. But don't worry, private sellers, I do not intend to leave you out of this. It is true that if the description of the plant you are selling is not mentioned, then caveat emptor may apply. However, there are some exceptions. The main one in our case, of course, misrepresentation. If the seller can be proven to deliberately deceive the buyer, then buyer beware will not apply, and the seller faces legal recourse. Here's where I can offer some guidance. The buyer can shift the responsibility to the seller if the three following conditions are fulfilled. If the buyer shares with the seller his purpose for the purchase. The buyer relies on the knowledge and or technical expertise of the seller. And if the seller sells such goods. So if you're unsure who you're really buying from, here's what you can do to protect yourself. Buy from official and reputable online marketplaces such as Etsy, not via Facebook comments. 
buy from someone who frequently sells plants. In the case of a plant with dubious variegation, ask for written confirmation that the variegation on the plant is not chemically induced and not temporary. This will ensure that there is a legally explicit description of the product that is agreed upon between you and the seller. Make it clear to the seller in writing that you are purchasing the plant because it continuously grows pink leaves. This legally confirms your intended purpose of use. By attaining this information in writing, you will have proof of intentional deception. Yes, I know these things aren't usually the done things, but they will offer you protection when you open a case against the seller. And of course, finally, if you feel like something is off, then leave. Sellers, I ask one thing of you. Well, I've asked before, but it seems a whole bunch of you weren't listening. So I will ask again. Say, it's fake. What if I told you that all of this gets slightly worse? I made quite a grim discovery a few days ago. Someone is trying to sell a bottle of a mysterious chemical they claim will turn your plants pink. Now, I can't speak as to whether this chemical is safe, whether it will do anything, or whether it is simply their own personal brand of snake oil. They unfortunately don't ship to the United Kingdom. I tried to purchase this item repeatedly, by other means and through other people living in the US. The seller either ignored or refunded us. I really must ask, what's the matter? Scared? Or do you only refund people with a following? I'll be keeping a very close eye on you. Many of you may have already known everything there is to know about the Pink Congo before watching this video today, but I want you to please remember the hobby is expanding and there are plenty of people who do not know what they're really buying online when it comes to these plants. We need to keep asking for disclaimers on pink Congos, pink Micans, pink Dark Lord, white Congo and any other crap that anyone can come up with. Descriptions should not be left blank when we're at a time when people are more concerned with spending money than ever before. I don't expect to see prices as high as they currently still are. Without the disclaimer, the scam may continue. The only difference being that the profit made per unit is lower than my original video. Other than that, nothing has changed. Creators of these plants will keep innovating. Since my research began, I did happen to encounter something completely new to us all. Feast your eyes on... Whatever the fuck this is.
quite honestly given up guessing at when this will end. But you can bet that I will be keeping close watch on all of it. And no, this isn't what is natural for this plant, the philodendron birkin. This is what it looks like in a regular garden centre. Or is it? But none of this really matters. This, along with the white Congo, it will not return the same warnings as the pink Congo when I run a Google search. Let's change that. I want to see the first page of Google reflect the same level of transparency for this crap as it did in 2019. And please, less of these idiotic articles encouraging people to keep their eyes shut and their mouths closed. Enough is enough. Let's show the people at the top that we are always watching. There are a lot of scammers out there taking people's hard-earned money. And believe me when I say that Pink Congo is the tip of the iceberg. This video is meant to shed light on some of these issues. So that in our never-ending consumption, we dine responsibly. The wicked underbelly of the plant community is an all-you-can-eat buffet of scammers and unfriendly people, to say the least. Not everyone may want to participate in this meal, and that's fine. But as for me? I'm fucking starving. <laughs>